everybody. Welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron. Today we're going to get started on part two of the flip truck. We're going to finish up cleaning up that motor, getting it ready to go back in and uh, see where else it takes us. But had something really cool happen today. Uh, two of my subscribers, Jeff and Cheryl, reached out to me and said that they were on vacation and they were going to be in the general area of where I'm at. And asked if it was okay if they stopped by to meet me. And I think that's really cool. I ain't never had anybody from, you know, YouTube or anything. Anybody that's seen me on social media or whatever want to meet me. So that was a really cool feeling. And uh, they came. Super nice people. Really enjoyed it. And uh, I can tell he really watches my videos because he showed up with a brand new shop vac for me. Said he did a bunch of research to find the best one, and I'm very grateful for it. I think it's one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. So thank you, Jeff and Cheryl. Means a lot to me, and I have tried it out already, and it definitely leaps and bounds above the rest. Does a great job. So I'm gonna um, get some stuff organized here, and we're gonna start working on that motor. All right. This thing's been sitting draining for two days now, I guess. So I'd say everything that wants to come out is out. We're gonna go ahead and pull the oil pan and timing cover off. If I had the right size socket. All right. Now we're gonna pull the oil pan off. Got that off. This thing is disgusting. I don't think I've ever messed with one that was this bad. 
But we're messing with this one now, so we're going to get her cleaned up. Looks like all the valve seals are good because all the valves are nice and clean and dry. So, and like I said, it didn't smoke when it was running. So that makes me feel good about it. We'll get her all cleaned up, sealed up, and uh, let her start her life over again. I don't want to badmouth any oil companies, but uh, a lot of this is probably lack of maintenance. But there is one oil company out there that has a tendency to gum motors up like this. So uh, I got reason to believe that might be some of it. All right, so now we got that off. I'm going to take the uh, oil pan, valve covers, timing cover. Uh, intake, pretty much everything I got off. I'm going to go see if I can get that old uh, pressure washer to fire up today and take it outside and clean it up. But as far as this block goes, it's going to do a lot of what I'm doing right here. Sit here and scrape on it, get the bulk of everything that I can off of it with the scraper. I know there's a freeze plug in here somewhere. Oh, hey, look, there it is. Alright. It's going to take a while, and it's literally just going to be me scraping. So, I'm going to save you guys the agony of watching, and we'll just, uh, fast forward to the next step in the process. I don't know if y'all are going to believe this because I almost didn't, but there's actually a motor under that pile of grease and dirt. It, uh, scraping did halfway decent. Next thing I'm going to do is take a wire brush, scrub it all down, get much more of the loose stuff off as we can. And then we'll go at it with brake parts cleaner and rags until we get it paintable. So, just giving you a little update. I'm going to get back to it. This is a really time consuming process. It's really not for the impatient, which surprises me that I can actually do it because I'm one of the most impatient people you'll meet. But seeing the finished product at the end really makes it all worth it to me. So. I got it all scraped loose. That's clean bare cast right there. Like it. Got all the major gunk scraped off of it. Now we'll go back and brush it to get all the stuff that we couldn't get to with the scraper. I suppose you could probably put one of them spinning wire brushes on a drill or something and do the same thing, but I don't have one. And I feel like I got a little bit better control with this as far as not throwing stuff down in the motor and whatnot. So, just gonna go over the whole block and heads and scrub them all down and get off as much of it as I can. It's almost like you're going in stages, like there's the oil that was covering the whole outside of everything and then you get underneath it and there's like a heavy layer of dirt that's like dry it's kind of weird like from back in the day when the motor didn't leak it got covered in dirt and then it started leaking and just built up on top of it and caked it up so All right, 
right, well, you guys get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm just going to sit here and scrub this thing down with a brush. So, I'll update you in a little bit. Alright, bring you guys in here close and show you. It's pretty clean. That's just from wire brushing it. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take a lot of brake parts cleaner and just keep hosing it down. Wiping it down with towels until I don't get any residue of oil left. And then uh, we'll let it dry good and then it'll be ready to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. yesterday and I had some personal stuff to take care of so I got a little bit done that I'll show you and then I had to leave to go do some other stuff but uh the blocks all cleaned up ready to paint I went out yesterday morning and pressure washed the intake and the oil pan and the timing cover to get the majority of the junk off of them and then I went ahead and cleaned this good and scuffed it up cleaned all the bolts put a new seal new gasket I should have filmed it, but I wasn't thinking I was just getting stuff done. So got the motor rolled over, got the timing cover on it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the oil pan cleaned up a little bit. And I got an, that's another thing. The gasket that I got for it was wrong, so I had to get another one. So we're going to get that cleaned up a little bit. We'll get it put on. I know I just did a video about doing this same thing. I'm trying to go a little bit more in depth with this one. And this is... A step in the process for the flip truck so i'm just going through it all so we can keep track of time and expenses and all that so i can tell you guys how much it costs so hang with me we're going to get that oil pan cleaned up and we'll get it put on the motor all right just like i do on all the other ones you're seeing me do we're going to use the one piece rubber felpro gasket here we'll put our little alignment dowels in Snap it down in place. And we'll take our pan that I got all cleaned up. Get all our new bolts and star washers that the kit comes with. I can't stress this enough. These are the best oil pan gasket kits I've ever come across. They come with the bolts because the bolts need to be a little longer so they come with all new bolts. And you can't hardly make these things leak. So highly recommend them to anybody that's doing their motor they, uh, they're the way to go for sure
work them down. I moved the motor over into the paint booth and uh, we're going to go ahead and spray the oil pan, the timing cover area, and kind of the bottom here. And then after that I'll have painted behind the water pump and behind the balancer and stuff like that so we can go ahead and assemble that stuff and paint it with it on there so everything kind of meshes but I don't like putting parts on and then painting over them because then if you look at them from the right angle you can see behind them isn't painted and it bothers me so I'm a little weird I overdo some stuff but I like stuff to look good when I'm done so that's what I do got it all cleaned up pretty good I'm gonna put a piece of tape on this crankshaft so that we don't get paint on it and then I'll uh, start spraying her Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this may surprise you guys a little bit, but we're going with Duplicolor DE1609, which is Chevy Corporate Blue. For one thing, that's my favorite color to paint a motor, and second, it's going in an 81-82 era truck, which 81-82, this would have been the factory color of the motor. So, I'm really doing it because it's my favorite color, but I'm also doing it because I'm going to do everything I can to try to make this truck look stockish, you know, just kind of a very, very mild restoration. Just clean everything up, make it look nice, and uh, so that's why we're going with the corporate blue. You guys have seen me paint plenty of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and dust coat it, let it tack up, put another coat on it, start getting ready to put more parts on. So. Uh, that's what we're doing. All right. I got a decent coat of paint on the spots that the balancer is going to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. I got my speedy sleeve that came with my new seal I put in there. So we're going to go ahead and try to get that on there. Just gonna take a piece of emery cloth and clean this up where it goes over the crank here, where the seal rides. See if it makes it easier to get that speedy sleeve on.
got that cleaned up where this speedy sleeve is supposed to go and where that seal is going to ride. I'm going to have to go get a little dead blow hammer and tap this on there, but I can already see there's a little groove in this balancer where the seal was riding. So I definitely want to make sure I get this speedy sleeve on here so it's got a nice smooth spot to seal up on that seal. So I'm going to go grab a hammer and tap this down on there real nice like. And then uh, I got my balancer all cleaned up so we're going to go ahead and slide it on. And then uh, we can put a little bit more paint on it, get a couple parts cleaned up, and put them on, so on and so forth. Got the block rolled over. Got my intake cleaned up and ready to put on. There's a couple things I want to go over with you guys. I'll be able to show you better when I get the intake up here. But this motor was out of an 84 model truck, which is Smog Era, EGR, all that stuff. And those Smog Era motors carbon up real bad. The intakes choke them down real bad for emissions purposes and so on. So, a cheap way to make your motor a little more efficient and definitely run and last longer is to get an intake manifold from an earlier model small block. I mean obviously the ideal thing to do would be to go buy a uh, aluminum like Edelbrock or something basically stock looking replacement with no EGR and none of that crap but if you want your motor to be more efficient and run better and you can't afford to go out and spend $140, $150 on an Edelbrock intake the next best thing is to go get a pre-emissions era small block intake which is what I'm doing here. I, I just happen to have them laying around because I keep that kind of stuff when I take them off of everything else. So, I'll, like I said, I'll show you when you get it up here, but there's a couple easy ways to tell. There's a difference. One, the pre, pre emissions usually had a heat riser for the choke. So they've got a little rectangle deal on the side and the EGR ones are going to have a big like kind of goofy looking triangular thing but anyways what I'm doing right now I'm putting a little bit of silicone around my water jackets front and rear of the heads I want to make sure I get a decent amount of silicone in the corners where the heads meet the block and then I'm going to run a nice big bead of silicone along these china walls. Same thing in the back. Doesn't really matter what color silicone you use. I prefer gray. Not because it does anything better in my opinion, just because I don't know. I honestly can't even explain it. I guess I just like the color gray better than blue or copper or whatever. And it, if you get a little bit that squishes out somewhere, it kind of blends in better than if you got a bright color. So, no specific reason why I'm using gray. I just I always use gray. There are differences in silicone. I mean, don't get me wrong. But, all I know is you use, oh crap, probably help if I put the intake gaskets on before the intake. Uh, like ultra copper and uh, the red hot stuff, that's for exhaust, like exhaust header flanges or stuff like that. You wouldn't want to use black or gray on something like that. But when it comes to intakes, water pumps, 
little stuff like that I don't think it really matters what color you use if it does tell me in the comments because I've been doing this stuff for quite a while and I honestly don't know like I said I use gray for everything unless it's heat or exhaust related and then I use copper or red but that's just personal preference okay so this intake came off of like an 80 or an 81 I don't know which one you see that little rectangle right there that's for the heat riser for the choke on the carburetor where on an EGR truck it's gonna have a big triangle deal there so set this on here the aluminum ones are so much more fun to work with these old suckers are heavy so like I was saying this came off of like an 80 or an 81 maybe set late 70s I don't know but it's non emissions the emissions ones carbon up really bad and get really nasty so this is a good way to I'm not saying you're going to get any more performance or anything so don't get the wrong idea there but it will be a little more efficient and run better in my opinion you can take the EGR valve off and just block it off but the intakes are still made different so I'm just going to go ahead and bolt this on and then uh, we'll get the valve covers over here and keep moving. Alright, so another little trick. <coughs> I understand not everybody has a hammer and dolly, but there's a lot of different things you can do this with. But if you're going to reuse stock valve covers, take something heavy that not gonna that you can hit against basically and where the four bolt holes are on the valve cover pound them flat because over the years the valve covers leak and people go oh my valve covers are leaking they must be loose and they tighten the bolts down and then uh, and then um, and it bends the valve cover pushes it down where the bolt hole is and it actually makes it worse so just take a little body hammer ball peen hammer something along those lines and something you can put underneath there and hit against and just rub your finger over it make sure it's nice and flat these particular valve covers off this motor are really bad. Somebody really cranked on these suckers.
you're not going to get them absolutely perfect. I mean, if you're a body man or something, I guess, and you really want to take the time, you could. But as long as they're just fairly flat so that the gasket getting pinched evenly. It's going to make a big difference. And then on these valve covers, there's actually a top and a bottom. So the side that goes in towards the intake doesn't have a solid lip all the way around. It's actually got a little cutout. So you can put these stock valve covers on backwards. So you just want to make sure the side that has the lip goes down towards the exhaust manifold. So next thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of Gorilla Snot, like I call it. It's actually uh, weather strip adhesive. And this isn't going to help the valve cover seal. And it's not, probably doesn't hold up very well to the heat. But I'm not using it for sealing purposes. I'm just strictly putting it on there to hold the gasket in place until I get everything mounted down. I'm not using a lot. I don't want it to squeeze out or anything like that. I'm literally putting on a really thin layer just enough to hold that gasket in place and why I get everything set up and bolted down. So, doesn't got to be pretty, doesn't got to be perfect, you're never going to see it. It's just to hold that gasket. The reason I use weather strip adhesive is because it tacks up fast. It doesn't take a lot of time. So put the gasket in place where you want it. Pinch it down and hold it for a minute. Like that. And then let them sit there and tack up for a minute and uh, then we'll put them on. Alright. These little uh, T-bars or whatever you want to call them right here. I consider those very important if you're using a stock valve cover. But you want to make sure they always say on them top or this side down or something like that you want to make sure you put them the right way because they're kind of spring loaded and you don't want to tighten them down real tight but they distribute the the pressure outward so you don't just have one point that's holding it uh, this motor didn't have any on it when i took it out and i only had four in my chevy bolt pile literally a pile so i put them on the bottom that's where it's most prone to leaking and then just put bolts in the top didn't force them down just got them snug now what i do is i take a little ball peen hammer and i start like about right here after it's all bolted on and i just tap on it all the way down to about here in the back same in the front on both sides and that tried by doing that i don't know if it actually does anything i just hope but uh i'm trying to kind of bend the metal down so it's putting more pressure on that gasket so it might work, it might not, but I do it anyways because I, in my crazy mind, I think it works. But, so we got pretty much the whole engine assembled now as far as it needs to go before we set it back in the truck. So we're going to go ahead and get a couple coats of paint on the top and then we'll be in good shape. We got our valve covers on. We got our thermostat and thermostat housing on. I know there's a hole here because I took the uh, I took the sensor, the vacuum 
sensor, whatever the heck it is, out. And I'm just going to put a plug in there. So, we're going to go ahead and block that off. We're going to block off our base for our carburetor. Block off our distributor hole. tape on there and then I'll go back through and cut off the excess that I don't need or want. Okay. I'm going to put the oil cap that was on here back on while I paint it because I have a brand new one to put on that I just had laying around and then we'll throw some paint on here three coats of paint on the top of the motor it's had some time to tack up and I think it's looking really good everything else that we're gonna bolt on it before we drop it in is gonna be a different color so I just did everything that was gonna be blue put it together got it painted and that's the gist of it. I mean, all the other stuff, I could set the motor in just like that and put everything else on it after it was already in, but I like putting the exhaust manifolds and stuff on before I drop them in. It makes things a little bit easier in the long run. So what we're going to do now, I got this whiteboard and uh, it's supposed to be hanging on the wall and useful, but I haven't made it there yet. So we're just going to go flip truck cost then over here we'll put budget that's going to be four thousand dollars total that's the most we want to have in it when it's done so the truck itself was Fifteen hundred dollars. And then we got fourteen hundred dollars for the donor truck. And then the other day I said I had uh three hours labor and then so far I have bought a well since this is budget so just for um, what you could do it for I bought the one piece rubber oil pan gasket and that's like $33 by itself but I had parts of old gasket sets laying around that I used for the rest of the gaskets. So I should say a gasket engine gasket set costs fifty dollars because that's they used to be like thirty bucks and with inflation and whatever I'm assuming they're fifty now. 
And then uh, bought a thermostat. That was like five bucks. And uh, paint was $25 for two cans of spray paint. Can you believe that? I think that's ridiculous. And then I was only over here for about an hour yesterday to when I pressure washed everything and then deep cleaned and put together the timing cover and all that stuff. So the, we'll say an hour yesterday and then I've got about four hours in it today. So five times 50 would be uh, $250 labor so as of this point right now with the motor ready to set in the truck we're at 29 2 30 and 250 230 plus 250 would be 480 Plus 2,900 would be 0, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 3. Okay. Wait. That's not right. I'm way off there. Somebody help me do math. How do I do this? So 2,900 plus 480 would be 33... Oh, that's where I screwed up. I was using this too. So it's 3380. All right. Sorry guys, my my skills aren't the greatest. So right now we're at 3380 out of our $4,000 budget. That leaves us $620. And the donor truck is also a parts truck. So with that being said, we're taking the parts that we want off of it, but everything else that's on it is useless to us, really. I mean, it's nothing left. So minus $150. For the windshield because I sold that to the customer that I'm doing hot shot for because I needed the windshield um, we got $50 for the cowl panel um, $25 for the glove box latch. And $25 for the It's the, for a bracket that goes under the steering column. I know what that means, but regardless. So, that's just parts that we've sold so far and we haven't even advertised that we're selling parts off of it. That's just stuff that we basically needed for ourselves and whatnot. So that's two, that's $250 so far that we've made back off of our investment. So that's 250. So we've got 3380 minus 250 is 3130. So that leaves us with $870. Yeah, $870 to finish this truck on budget. Now, the motor's already done. Other than cleaning up some more stuff, maybe two more hours of labor for cleaning and painting. The transmission has nothing wrong with it. 
it shifted good and crisp and fine and it was good it just needs to be cleaned up so very little time on it um cleaning up wiring harness very little stuff we'll go through it as we go through it i'm not going to go through it all right now but either way we still have let's just say 900 dollars left to make our budget and we still have the option to sell more parts off the donor truck and that was one thing i wanted to explain to you guys is square body chevys are hot real hot and parts on them if you're not afraid to ask for big money for the parts you'll get big money for the parts i mean it's just people need it people like the uh stock stuff that's in decent condition versus buying aftermarket it fits better it looks better as long as it's in good shape and it's cleaned up so if you go to do a flip like this and you buy two trucks because you need certain parts off of one to flip the good one that you're flipping you still have that whole other truck to make money so that's part of your budget like it's i mean it's actually a good idea if you can get two trucks for a reasonable price you can probably part one truck out for most of the cost that you have in the whole flip so that's the trick to doing this with that being said it's been a long day i've huffed enough paint fumes i think the motor over there is looking fantastic really happy with the way it's coming out i appreciate you guys watching if you're not subscribed please do and uh see how this whole series on the flip truck turns out if you are subscribed share it with your friends uh leave me a comment let me know what you think um how am i doing on this so far what do you guys think about my plan to do this let me know uh leave me a like even if you don't like it like it anyways but uh ring the bell do your thing once again if it wasn't for y'all there'd be no me Y'all have a good one and we'll see you next time.